Hi booktube, I'm here with the Friday Reads. Uh, this is a different angle, and I think I'm gonna have to project my voice, because I'm filming on my phone. Um, yeah, you can actually see more of my bookshelf here. Uh, and you can see the blank spots on my bookshelves, because I've been taking books out um, for a project for next year. Um, so, I think I might actually talk about that too. But first we're gonna get to what Friday Reads is about, and it's what I'm reading this Friday. I have this weekend off, so my number one priority, top of the list goal for reading this weekend is to finish Brothers Karamazov. I have 180 pages left, so that's 60 pages a day, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, I, the only room I have to clean up is this room that I'm currently in, and it's gonna be fun because of the project that I'm gonna show you. Um, but yeah, so that's the, the number one priority. But this is what I've been reading this week, what I'm going to be reading going into next week. Um, so I am 10 pages into <laughs> The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But I also I have also read the uh, introduction, which talks about how The Hitchhiker's Guide came to be, starting with the radio show and then like the book and then the TV show and then the radio show. And he ends with saying that he's writing the movie. Um, but this was written in 1985 and the movie didn't come out until the 2000s after he had already passed away. So I don't know if that was the same script. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just as funny as before. Um, I love this part where he talks about um, how to leave the planet in case you aren't very happy with how things are. Um, including calling NASA, um, calling the White House, um, calling the Kremlin. Um, which, you know, he says will have some influence, uh, because they obviously have influence and that still stands today. Um, and then if all those fails from the Pope, um, and if you can't do that, then try and flag, uh, passing aliens and hitchhike. Um, so yeah, um, I know this is going to be a fast read. I was falling asleep while reading it last night. That's the only reason I didn't get further than 10 pages in. And that was because I kept thinking about this book. <laughs> I just... Gathering of Waters. I just read 100 pages straight, just sat there and was just like, didn't realize time was passing. It was so engrossing. Um, so this is Gathering of Waters by Bernice L. McFadden. And it's amazing. I'm 100 pages in, but this main story hasn't started yet. Um, it's supposed to be about Tass Hilton, or Hilson, sorry, Tass Hilson and Emmett Till, um, who fall in love. And then Emmett Till, um, he's, he's a real person in history. I'll leave a link down below explaining his story because it's it's quite complicated. Well, not really. White men murdered him is basically how it comes down to because they thought he raped a woman, a white woman, but he didn't. Anyways, um, and then 40 years after um, the death of her husband, because she later marries someone else, um, she returns to this town and Emmett Till's um, spirit has come back, but this, this whole section so far has been just about other people. Um, so we get Doll Hilson, who I guess maybe Tass Hilson's mother, um, and her story, which is so messed up. Um, it, I don't know if it's really considered a spoiler. Um, I don't think it is. Um, they say that she was born with the soul of Esther the Whore. Um, who was so beaten by men that she turned evil. Um, and it's just, oh wow, what a story. And then we go into the story of, um, Sissy and, um, Cole, that's his name. And Sissy's a black girl and Cole's a white guy. Um, and this must be like 1920s or so, or like 1910s. So that's like a big, huge no-no, you know, like yeah, they can't be together. They're teenagers. Um, and so, um, Cole ends up, um, with a, another white woman and then they hire, well, kind of hire doll, um, and things go from there. So we'll see what happens, but the story is so compelling, so well-written, so engaging, and it's narrated by the town, like not like everyone in the town, but the town itself. Um, which is really cool. I can just go on and on about that book. It's, it's, I have to reconfigure my favorites list because this is definitely going on there. Um, and Moving Pictures is going well. Um, it's 
I'm waiting for things to come to a head right now um, because a lot of it, some of it's kind of getting a little repetitive about like filming and you know how grandiose these films are going to be. Um, so I'm just waiting for the arrival of a thousand elephants. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, yeah, so this is about some spirits kind of sneak into Ink, um, not Ink Moor Park, but not just the city, but on um, Discworld in general. And it's like a spirit, a spirit from our world of the Hollywood. And they are like enticing absolutely everyone to go and um, join the moving pictures industry. Um, so, but it's got its Discworld spin, obviously. Um, I'm still reading A History of God. Um, I think my goal, maybe by the end of this week, is to get more than halfway through. Um, oh yeah, there's like, I think there's 400 pages, so I only have about another 40 pages to read to do that. And I'm really enjoying this. I'm reading just now about, um, the beginnings of Islam. Um, the section I got to, Muhammad had just died and she's explaining the, uh, succession and how that split into the two, um, two groups, uh, the two main groups of Muslims. It's fascinating reading about, you know, this, this idea of the one God, um, and how it was influenced by, um, history and other religions. And it's really like, this is really well done. And lastly, I'm still plugging through The Pale King. I know I have to make this a priority because I think I'm only, I'm only on page 160. And this is 550 pages, um, so I have to read more of that. But there's no plot, so it's not really compelling me to pick it up, um, to be honest. It's more just like conversations, different ideas, um, that all kind of take place at or around or about the IRS. Um, but it's not nonfiction. <laughs> it's hard to explain. But yeah, that's the general idea. And now I'm going to talk about this project that I've done. And you can't see, well, maybe you can see some <laughs> um, stuff around me. And I'm just going to pull these boxes that are in front of me because it's easier. What I've done is I've selected my TBR for the whole year. The whole year, I have everything planned. I want to make sure I hit my goals. So in order to do that, I had to make a whole TBR. And um, some of, like, I think about, I have about 10 books for each month, and seven to eight of those books are picked out, named, I know what they are. And then uh, two to three books are from an unwrapped, uh, my unwrapped, like my wrapped books. Um, and then I further wrap them. I put them in boxes or I put them in gift bags, stuff from the dollar store. And then for all my ebooks and audiobooks, I have a little card here. Um, so here's a little sneak peek at my August TBR. I don't, I can't remember what's in the box. Um, but I'm going to be reading for an ebook where the white, where white men fear to tread. Um, Nervous Conditions, Fires of Vengeance. My comic is going to be Kabuki Volumes 1 to 7. And my audiobook is going to be Super Extra Grande. Um, so yeah. And I'm doing this for multiple reasons. One, because I wanted to. I thought it would be cool um, to, you know, unwrap a box of books every month. I'll fix that later. <laughs> and, uh, no, I'm going to fix it now because it's going to drive me crazy. Um, I'm going to have to retape that. And uh, number two, because I'm going to attempt a year-long book buying ban. I have a ton of unread books. And however much I don't care about getting my TBR to zero because that will never happen, the number is like nearing a thousand. And it, it's ridiculous. So I need to concentrate on the books that I do have. Um, the ebooks I already own, the audiobooks I already own, the comics I already own. I'm not buying anything. Nothing digital, nothing audio, nothing hardcover. There's a few exceptions and I'll explain that in my goals video for 2021. But I thought if I make it kind of like feel like I'm getting new books each month with like the unwrapping um, and still meeting goals with having it like as, as a present, maybe that will... <laughs> urge that will satisfy that urge to buy new books. So we'll see. I have them all planned out. Like I have, I 
have everything. Oh, the December December uh, card fell off, but I can already tell that this is the December TBR. I'll stick it in there. Because it's a Christmas bag. And I was just like, well, there's there's December all the way wrapped up. And I'm going to keep my tree up because for a few reasons, I love my tree. I love my Christmas tree. Second reason, I don't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> there's no storage. Um, so yeah, here I'm going to show you my tree. I'll show you my tree. There's my tree. Super colorful and pretty. Um, and it's not explicitly Christmas. I mean, there's nothing Christmassy about donuts. They're year-round things and unicorns are year-round things and llamas are year-round things. Baubles are... Okay, that's maybe a bit of a stretch, but you get what I'm saying. So that's it. Um, let me know what you're concentrating on this weekend for your reading and thank you for watching.